episode of Bolton Sports Talk. I'm your host, Brian Rathbone. And on today's show, we are joined by Bend High Volleyball Coach Kristen Cooper. And we're just going to talk a lot about volleyball and why it's so good here in Central Oregon. How good is it, though? I don't know. Since 2006, there's been two different teams that have won a combined 19 state titles and a ton more that are bringing home trophies year in and year out at the state tournaments. Let's go to the notebook and just see how long this list actually is. So again, starting 2006, these are teams that have brought home trophies from the state tournament back to Central Oregon and their respective schools. So in 2006, Crook County beats Mountain View in the 5A state title game. In the same tournament, same bracket, Summit finishes six. In 2007, Crook County then beats Summit in the 5A title game. Sisters wins the 4A title. In 2008, Crook County beats Mountain View again. Summit finishes third, so one, two, three in the 5A tournament. Sisters makes it to the state title game, but comes up short, finishing second. In 2009, Crook County beats Summit again. Summit then, Sisters then wins the 4A title. In 2010, there's a reclassification and Crook County gets moved down from 5A to 4A. So yeah, the team that just won like five straight titles Moves down a level. In the 5A, in the 5A field, Mountain View finishes fourth, Summit finishes fifth, Crook County wins the 4A title, Sisters finishes fourth in 4A. In 2011, Summit wins the state title, Crook County wins the 4A title, Sisters finishes fifth, and in 2A, Culver finishes fourth. In 2012, Summit finishes fourth, Ben finishes fifth in 5A, Crook County wins the 4A title again, Sisters finishes fourth, and Culver wins its first state title since the 80s at 2A. In 2013, Bend finishes fifth, is the only one in 5A. Crook County again wins 4A. Sisters finishes third in Ridgeview. Then a 4A school finishes fourth. Culver finishes third at the 2A tournament. In 2014, seven teams of about the 12 in, in Central Oregon bring home a trophy. Summit finishes fourth in 5A. Ben finishes sixth in 4A. Sisters puts an end to Crook County's streak of eight straight titles, winning 4A bracket. Crook County finishes third. Madras also finishes fourth at the 4A tournament. In the 2A field, Culver finishes third. And Trinity Lutheran finishes sixth in 1A. In 2015, Summit wins the 5A title. Ben finishes fourth. 4A Sisters finishes second. Crook County finishes third. In 2A, Culver finishes second. And in 1A, Trinity Lutheran finishes fifth. In 2016, Ben finally breaks through and wins a title. Summit finishes fourth in 5A. Sisters beats Crook County for the 4A title, and Culver finishes fourth in 2A. Ben repeats in 2017, beating Summit in the state title game in five sets. Uh, Sisters wins the 4A title. Crook County finishes fourth in 4A, and Culver finishes second in 2A. So, that year, Ben, Summit, Sisters, Colbert, all playing for state titles. 2018, there's another reclassification. Crook County goes from 4A back to 5A, but the big move is Ben, Mountain View, Summit, up to, up to the highest classification. And still, Summit finishes fifth at the 6A bracket. <clears throat> Ridgeview finishes second in, in 5A, and Sisters finishes third in 4A. In 2019, Summit again makes it to the state, state tournament, finishing sixth. Ridgeview wins the 2019 5A state state championship with Crook County finishing fourth in 5A. And Sisters finishes fourth in 4A. 2020, there's not really much of a season, no official season anyway, but Sisters did advance to the 4A version of the state tournament and made it to the state title game, but came in second. And then in 2021, when it were only four teams were invited to the state tournament because of because <laughs> Ben finishes third in 6A, Ridgeview finishes five and third in 5A, excuse me, and Sisters makes it to the state title game and comes up in second. So yeah, long list of some really good teams. Now let's talk. Now let's talk to Kristen more about it. All right, joining me now is Kristen Cooper. Hi. Hi, Kristen. How you doing? Six. Great. Thank you. She of course uh, coaches at Bend High Volleyball and in various uh, other capacities. You're doing beach volleyball now and you do club 
as well? Do you ever do you ever stop co coaching volleyball during the year? I didn't feel it was a long club season, so I don't feel like it. I used to have a little break, but uh, you do what you love, right? Exactly. Um, <laughs> so, Chris, I start off this, uh, you know, th th this podcast kind of going through all the all the years of um, Central Oregon going back to 2006 and okay. every year there's at least there's at least three teams that make it all the way to the you know state tournament and are bringing home trophies so fin finishing in, in, in the top six um which i think is you know pretty kind of kind of remarkable in, in some capacities that all these teams are able to advance in kind of a small area what, yeah. what is it that makes central oregon such a volleyball hub <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think you have some coaches and some people here that love the sport and are very knowledgeable in it. And I think they kind of share that passion with the younger group, the younger generation that's coming through. And um, a lot of them are players and or coaches themselves, the ones that are kind of taking these teams. And so I think it's just kind of creating um strong volleyball in this area at least that's what i've kind of found when i talk to other coaches I'm like yeah i played and um so i think that's just kind of created this atmosphere around here in central oregon with a lot of people that enjoy and love the sport and so now we've got this younger generation coming through starting like my daughter started at age six just because she grew up in the gym so it just kind of is growing these volleyball players here has it always kind of been like that since it, since you've been here? I, you said you 16 years have been doing this? Uh, yes. Yeah, I'm going on my 16th year. Um, when I moved up here, there was the Wascom family that was here and they had three daughters. And um, yeah, I mean, there was just, I think volleyball has definitely grown since I've been here. Um, I think with just more people moving here though as well, you know, the population has grown a lot since I've moved here. Um, and that's brought in a lot of athletes. But um, yeah, I, I, I think that's kind of how it is just kind of festering and <laughs> growing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how, how young do you start just kind of like seeking out players <laughs> where like, all right, you know, hey, you, you look pretty tall. Oh. <laughs> come, come bring this is, is something like how, how, how early does this kind of volleyball Oh gosh, you know, it's gotten younger and younger. When I first started coaching here at Ben High, we would have a junior lava bear camp. And a lot of girls were kind of starting out sixth grade. And then I was starting to get some phone calls from some parents of, you know, my daughter's younger than that. Can she participate? And I'm always like, of course, I'm never going to turn anybody away who wants to play. Um, and so by like my fifth year here, uh, we started then doing a second through sixth grade and then the seventh through ninth. And we actually had to split the, the ages because there were so many younger, younger kids playing uh, boys and girls. So we even get some boys in our camps. So I think after, you know, what was that about 2010, I guess, 2011, um, we started seeing as young as like second graders kind of coming in and wanting to play. And now my younger group, junior lava bear camp is more numbers than my older. So they're starting pretty young now. We start with a balloon and one of those big <laughs> inflatable balls, but <laughs> they're pretty fun. There's this like town in Ohio that's like really big into football. Um, like they're they're high like it's like a one high school town that has this huge like facility that's like on par with a lot of like professional facilities. And it's like they drop footballs into like each of the like boys that are born in the town that'll yeah. home football. So <laughs> pretty, pretty, yeah. pretty soon you'll probably be doing that, you know, as, as it just keeps getting younger and younger. Um so there, there's you know the you know, once we kind of turned into, you know, 2010, um, just all these teams are, you know, competing for, you know, not, not only like conference styles, but you guys are, you, Summit, you know, Crook County, Mountain View, you're all just kind of like competing, you know, for, for state yeah. titles as well. Yeah. What, what do you just kind of remember about that kind of era of just like a really competitive? <laughs> Definitely a rivalry, you know, yeah. but yeah, it's a, um, it's a healthy one. You know, mm -hmm. I think it just, makes the kids every time you go into one of those local team competitions you know everybody's up for it and i love it because we're still small town in that way where you get a huge crowd at these games and so it's it is it's a lot of fun and then you know if they kind of start moving on when i was very first kind of starting to get into some state runs it was summit and mountain view that were always there and 
you know, we'd be listening. They didn't quite have it broadcasted yet. <laughs> That's how long ago it was, but we would be listening on the on the radio through the computers and how the games were going. Um, so it's it's awesome to have that competition here because it just makes you better. You know, you just you talk about it. You know, you don't want this school doing more than you are, and it just kind of pushes and drives the girls through the off season to want to be better as well. But the really neat thing about being here in Bend and kind of our little hub is a lot of the girls play together you know, in the off season as well. I see them all out on the sand courts, um, you know, partnering up and playing from, from different schools. So it's, it's a neat thing that we have here in central Oregon for volleyball for kids growing up. Yeah. The, my, I think the very like first like assignment I did, you know, moving out here was going to a Ben Mountain View volleyball game. This was <laughs> 2019 and yeah. the, the stops where I was at previously before getting here, volleyball wasn't, uh, it was, it was playing, but it, but it wasn't, but it, but it wasn't like great. And that yeah. was just like a crazy game. Like I remember the gym being super full, <laughs> Yeah. like Mountain View, like takes like the first two sets and you guys kind of rally back and there's just like, okay, this is, this is how volleyball is like supposed to look at a, at a high level. And yeah, that, that's still just, you know, kind of since then it's like, okay, volleyball here is just, it, it is just different. It's a thing. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, 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 it sure is. Um, and then, um, so it, it, you started, you know, your first year was, would that be 2000, 2006, 2007? Oh my gosh. Fire alarm. Oh I'm my. Sorry. <laughs> it's like, let me, let me, let me. now. <laughs> All right. We are back after a brief uh, fire drill <laughs> at, at Bent High. Thankfully, the, the school's not uh, burnt down. Um, but we we'll continue on, on with this, uh, Kristen. So you get here in uh, 2007. And, you know, within, you know, a, a deck within the decade, you take a, you know, program that's, you know, not making the playoffs to a, you know, state, to a state title. What was just kind of those like early, what was kind of the key to kind of building a program over, over that time? Um, for us here at Ben High, I had a couple players. Um, they were coaches and teachers, kids who just really believed um, that we could do it. And so they really bought into the program. Um, it was a couple girls. And so our motto that year was, why not us? And they worked, they came in during the summer. They got a lot of the girls in the weight program. Um, and they really helped develop the program. They were the first year that we actually went to the state tournament um, and really kind of built that culture of, hey, Ben High can compete in volleyball and it's gonna take some work, but we can do it. And so I had those couple of players that just really believed and really helped me kind of start building the program here at, at Ben High School. Yeah, who are, who are those? Uh, who um, are Ellis, Claire, Ellis Claire, her brother now is a coach here at Ben High. And okay. um, Molly, her best friend, and they just, um, she was a middle and she was a setter and they just kind of, they bought into what I was wanting to do with the program and were just great. They were great leaders in the school and then they were great leaders um, in the program. Is, it, is there kind of a point like where you are just kind of, you know, in, in these early stages of a program of kind of, you know, building a program that just like, you know, kind of need to happen or it's like, right, I want to see, you know, this, 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 and this is kind of how we kind of gauge what, what success is. How, how are you kind of gauging, you know, the, the program kind of improving kind of in those early years? Um, I, I think a lot of it was getting the girls to kind of love the sport, because if you love it, you're going to want to work hard at it. And so being able to see how many girls were continuing on after high school, and it's not necessarily just, you know, scholarships or division one scholarships. That's not really what it's about, but wanting to continue to play. Um, I had a lot of girls when I very first came in here that just were like, oh, I, I just like the sport and I'll come out. And so I had some athletes, but not necessarily volleyball players. Mm -hmm. And then I had kind of Ellis and Molly that came in that loved volleyball. Um, they did play some club and they wanted to continue to play afterwards. And so them kind of buying in and knowing that they, that they could, and that that was an option for them. Um, that's kind of how I gauge how I'm doing um, me as a coach, because really, I just want them to continue on with the sport and love the sport. So um, that's kind of how I measure my success. Mm -hmm. 
as if they still, they still want to play. And then it's kind of when they come back and they ask to coach with you, <laughs> you know, because yeah. they, they've, they've loved the program and they've loved what you kind of have going on. So. So in, in, in these mid two thousands, you go from, you kind of, you know, break through, you mm -hmm. go and you make it into, you know, the, the tournament. How hard is it to, you know, to kind of, you know, take those, you know, kind of next steps as a programmer is like, all right, we have, we're having success and yeah. now we're, you know, getting to that, that next level of, you know, getting a tournament and then, you know, kind of eventually getting, bring, bringing home titles. And being yeah. To that top eight. So we had quite a few years where we were making it to the state playoffs, but never kind of getting to that tournament, the top eight. Mm -hmm. um, and then we finally broke through and got into that top eight. And then once we would get there, we would come in and we would always win that first match. And then we would lose the second. I think I came away with like a, a fifth place, a fifth place, a sixth place. And we just kind of weren't really breaking through. And then I had, a, you know, just another couple players that are just like, there's no reason why we can't. If we put in this work and we do this, and I think it was more than just the volleyball skill. It was more a team and a culture and family. And that was with um, Tatiana Enns and Katie Reed, this other kind of group that led um, where we got our first state title. And so, so you just kind of have to get over that little barrier, get over that hump. Because I think for a long time, the teams were believing, like setting the goal of getting to that tournament. But then I don't really know if they believed they could win it. Mm -hmm. you know, so with Tatiana's group, we took a big trip to Hawaii that year. Um, and we had a great time over there. Guy Enrique set up a camp for us over there. And it was the first time my assistant coach, Liz and I, we set goals. And it was the first time that the very first goal out of the mouth was we're going to win state. And it was just like, okay, these girls believe that they can do it. And so that team, honestly, we were probably not the best team. We were definitely the shortest team mm -hmm. that was there at state. Um, but we had so many parents from other teams come up to us and be like, you can't break your team. They're so tight. Um, you know, you can't tell whether you won a point or lost a point. Your team just handles it um, so well together. And the girls just always wanted to be around each other and be together. And, and it was, it was just a team that couldn't be broken. Um, and we ended up beating uh, Maris, the number one seed in the semifinals. It was an amazing match, but honestly, it was just, it was our team camaraderie that won that game more than anything else. So it was, it was pretty exciting. So I think it's just kind of getting, getting those players to believe that they are that good and that those goals are in their grasp. Um, obviously you have to work for it, but a lot of it is that mental part of the game too. So you win the title in 2016, and then 2017, it's, you know, Ben Summit state final. <laughs> that was a crazy final. Oh my yeah, God. You guys split the regular season. <laughs> yeah. What? Oh my what, gosh. What was that 2017 year like with, you know, two teams separated by a couple miles, just <laughs> going at it? Yeah. I, you know, we're both the, the Waskins and I, you know, we're both ultra competitive, but beforehand, you know, we're kind of laughing together. Like, why do we have to come over here to play and, you know, this and that. And I think our girls, we didn't come out real, real strong. We had lost the first two games. Um, and I'll never forget it. We were down in the third match. I think it was like 9.15 or something. Um, but I had this player, um, Jenna, she was a right side for us. And she just in the huddle, she's like, our season is not done. We're not losing this. We can do this. Let's go. And it was, it was her. Like I didn't really, I called the timeout and I was like, okay, girls, you know, this is, this is our time. This is our turning point. And she just got in the middle of that timeout and just brought something out of that team. And the girls just turned it on. And it was, it was a pretty amazing thing. I get goosebumps, like talking about it, just seeing this player come in and just get that belief. And, um, Casey Cox, my outside hitter. I just remember her. She would not let a ball fall after that. And I had Cambry Scott up in the middle, just putting balls away and it was just a we're not done and we ended up you know kind of coming back and we ended up we ended up winning it in five and it was that was a crazy final that was pretty fun <laughs> it's fun to come out on that end of it too but yeah uh, that's an awesome moment <laughs> that's just be just kind of a fun moment for kind of for the area just because I mean like you said you know those, those players probably all play together you know yep. throughout the year yep. they're they're they're, they're friends and whatnot 
<laughs> yeah, like I said, it's probably better to <laughs> of all the same titles, like coming out of the, on top of in that scenario is probably the, yeah. better, the better scenario for sure. Um, so I don't know like a ton about volleyball. Um, like, is there like a position where you're just like, all right, here's like a position on the floor. It's like, all right, here's like what I would like want to start like a team with. Like if I could pick one position, what position would it be that you kind of, you know, start a team with? Oh gosh. Um, that's hard. A lot of people compare uh, the setting position to like a quarterback because okay. they do, they run your offense um, and they touch the ball in every single play. You know, you hope they do if you've got a good passing team. But um, I have had girls in all different positions be leaders. So it's kind of hard. It's hard to, I guess, to pick a position. It's more of the personality of the girls on the team, of the mm -hmm. players. And um, just to have that drive and have that, you know, we're not going to quit. We're not going to lose. I'm not going to let you not show up. I'm not going to let you not work your hardest in practice. Um, that's more, I think, what builds the team is having that kind of leadership more than the skill. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you know, your, your setter probably is the one that has the most control of the game. Um, but I definitely, I've had outside hitters be captains. Um, I've had liberos, your back row, you know, because they're the ones kind of seeing the whole defense and talking and giving the feedback back there to your front row. And so, yeah, and your your middles are in there kind of running around the offense. <laughs> so yeah, you, you try and have a leader in each spot if you can. But with us, you know, being here in four schools now, we're all, all our top players are pretty spread out. So it's puzzle piecing things together to kind of be at your best um, with what you have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, you know, fourth, adding a fourth school now, um, that, that obviously, you know, that, that move is bringing you guys down back to 5A after spending, you know, the last four years, you know, up at 6A. What, what was the biggest difference that you saw between competing at 5A and competing at 6A? Because, I mean, you were able to have, you know, by the end of it, you guys are one of the top teams in the state, even at 6A level. Was there yeah. much of a difference? I think from what I see with the 5A and 6A is a lot of the 6A schools, they have a strength in just about every position and have at least two to three players in every position. Um, so when you get down to the 5A, which just means you have less numbers in your school, you know, you could get away with doing really well with three, four pretty good players. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you hit some of these schools and especially I think uh, competing against those private schools, you've got, there's no weak server there's no weak rotation where you try and build points um, because they're strong in every spot you know there are times when you can get through um with some of these other schools where you know maybe a weaker block is up and so you want to be having your best hitters up to make your most points at this point in time and you can kind of work with that a little bit in the 5a so that was tough um going to 6a and just not finding a lot of weaknesses in these teams so uh, I think that was, that was the biggest difference. And I happened to just kind of be building, you know, I had two really strong middles, which is not something that you typically get here in central Oregon. Um, I had a strong setter, an experienced setter. I had outsides. I had a great libero. I even had a libero that could play outside if one of my outsides was hurt or injured, you know, but now when you kind of are a little bit thinner, you know, you have somebody that's sick or injured and it can hurt your whole season because you don't necessarily have that player to replace. It's probably, you know, a younger girl, a freshman or a sophomore, and then they're like big eyed on the varsity field and it takes some time to, to warm up and get in it. So um, that, that definitely was the hardest part. I think moving up to 6A. Did you have to, you know, change anything with your kind of approach or like kind of coaching style once you kind of got up there to, you know, get to the point where you guys were at, where you guys are one of the final four teams? Um, I think it was more trying to get them to believe that they can compete at that level. You know, I think there was a lot of talk of coming off of the back-to-back -back state championships. And then there was just a lot of, well, can they do it in 6A and this and that. And so I think there actually was a lot of questioning from the girls of, you know, can we, and I think they felt that pressure a little bit for a couple of years. Um, and I was like, it's, it's volleyball, you know, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Just play what you love. And there's always, you can, I'm a true believer that any team can be beaten. You know, it's a, no matter who you are, you can break a team. 
you know, you can get them to that point where you start to break them apart, but you have to be strong yourself and believe that you can. Um, and so it took a couple years for the girls to kind of really believe that, yeah, we do belong here and we can compete here. And yeah, these, these girls are big, but we can also, you know, bigger girls, you tool the block, you know, we might not be hitting straight down on them, but there's different ways of getting points. So I think it was, um, more getting that mentality and then kind of telling all hitters, big hitters want to hit big, right? They want to have those big kills and mm -hmm. you talk to any of my players. And I've said it since I started here, like a kill is a kill is a kill. So whether you kill it on a 10 foot line or you tool off the block or you tip, it's a point and it's a kill. So kind of getting the girls to think about, we need to play a little bit smarter mm -hmm. um, playing against these bigger teams. So, yeah. All right, Kristen, I got a, I got a couple questions kind of um, from your, you know, er, early days of, you know, <laughs> okay. volleyball and, and coaching. Yeah. Um, what, what, what type of volleyball player were you? Were you the super loud one, were you outside hitter? Were you, were you in the middle? I was not in the middle. I'm five foot eight. Um, <laughs> no, I did. I was telling you a little bit earlier. I grew up in Manhattan Beach, so I went to Maricosta High School. It's a kind of a volleyball Mecca school um, down there, and I was an outside hitter for them. Uh, she tried to get me to set, and that didn't quite work out. So um, I stayed in the outside hitting position, and then it was always my goal. It's like I want to be the short girl that can play in college and play outside. So I ended up playing at Cal State Northridge outside hitter for a couple of years. And then I was playing sand all through this and my shoulder just said no more. So I had shoulder surgery after my sophomore year of college. And then I wanted to kind of play, um, if I was going to play back row, it's kind of my hitting was done at that point. I wanted to go to like a bigger school. So I transferred over to Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. And then I played um, back row for them. I was a defensive specialist. Okay. Is there, is there a player on, on the current team that just kind of reminds you of a, of a uh, that, that player plays like I did when I was younger or that that player has a lot of my, my game in it? Yeah, I have. So Jillian Stein, she's going to be a senior outside hitter for me. Um, reminds me a lot of myself. You know, she's not, I was not very vocal. Um, I tried to lead more just with my play and she's not very vocal, but um, she makes big plays. She flies around the court. She gets up and hits. Uh, she does not let her height hold her back. So she's worked really hard on her vertical. I had to work really hard on my vertical. <laughs> had to put on what we called moon shoes back then to try and get your vertical up. Um, she's just a hard worker and just loves the sport. So I, I kind of see myself in her. Yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> Jill Stein. All right. Is there, is there a piece of advice that you now as a coach of over, over 16 years now, um, what, what, what piece of advice would you give to the, you know, first year coach, Chris coaches? Um, I know it's hard. I think a lot of coaches come in and they want to prove themselves and they think that their coaching record is, um, you know, kind of tells the type of coach you are. And my advice would be, you know, don't look at the record, be who you are, coach, how you want to coach. Don't try and be somebody else. Um, cause it's really not an indicator of the type of coach you are. If you can measure yourself by, um, the girls that want to continue playing or the girls that are going to come back, you know, you get invited to their weddings and they want to come back and coach with you. That's really the measure I think of the type of coach you are. So don't get so caught up on, on the wins losses. Cause that really in the whole scheme of things is not really what it's about. Is, is that tough for, uh, I think it would be like, oh, it's, that something that you, sure. <laughs> yeah, you I think it, it, it is. It's hard to hear and hard to know. I think for me, I was, um, well, I went back when I graduated college, I actually went back and coached at Maricosta and it was like, you know, you didn't lose. And so those wins, there was so much pressure and getting all of those wins, like win the tournaments and win the games and the matches. So when I came up here, it was like, wanted to get the wins, but then I had my own kids. And it was like, you know, no matter what I do in my game, I'm going to come home and my husband and my family is still going to love me. And I think that grounded me a little bit. And it really allowed me to just coach and be who I wanted to be. And just, um, so I, I fell into who I am as a coach in that way. So, um, have kids. No, I'm just <laughs> it might ground you a little bit. No, I'm still really competitive, but I also have just kind of looked at and been, 
you know, it's not, it's not really about that. I want to make these players the best players that they can be. And if it all comes together and it brings you that championship, then it does. So, yeah. And then uh, what would a uh, young Chris, Kristen Cooper be most proud of the current Kristen Cooper as, as the coach? <laughs> Which would be like, oh, right. That's, that's tight. Well, that's cool. Oh, um, like what would the young Kristen Cooper be most proud of this Kristen Cooper? Um, I think it may be probably the relationships and I'm saying this just because I actually went to one of my players weddings last week mm -hmm. and she had, um, a bunch of players. She went and played at Eastern Oregon and I've had a few players go there and all those players kind of coming up to me and just talking to me. And, you know, we talk about volleyball and you always come up in the conversation and they're like wanting their friends to meet me and stuff. And so I think, seeing that and seeing the impact that I've had on some of these girls, um, I think young Kristen would, would be proud of that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Kristen. Well, Hey, I appreciate you so much for, for joining me for this. Um, thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, enjoy the rest of your summer. We'll be uh, checking in once, uh, once the season gets started. Yeah. We'll thank a, a you. week of, of, of summer vacation. It sounds like. Yes. Yeah. we got dead week coming up. So uh, I've got one more week of workouts with these girls. Um, but yeah, they've been working hard. It's been fun and we'll see what we got this year. <laughs>